There is nobody like him. There is nobody like him. There is nobody like him. There's none other that can compare her to your wonderful matchless name. So we give you glory. Come on. Stand up on your feet. We come to do this together and lift up the name of Jesus and glorify and magnify his wonderful name. Come on, give him glory. 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 You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the honor. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Give my mama my show. There's nobody like you. We pray to King Jesus. 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 We pray to 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 we pray Jesus, no matter what week you had, no matter what month you had, we've got to give him the glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Yeah, my 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 Dios, yeah, my my Dios, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to lift his name up. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, clap those hands. And I will bless the Lord.
weapon. Let me see you do weapon. My dance is a weapon. Whoa, let me see you use your weapon. Let me see you use your weapon. My spake on stoning him because the soul of all people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God and the word of the Lord is blessed grace and peace CCC uh, I will be reading the New Testament Luke chapter 4 verse 1 through 4 and it reads and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did not eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of god command his stone that it be made bread and jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and the word of the lord is blessed Grace and peace empowerment. I'll be reading the daily confession. Read along with me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. My members, the parts of my body, are instruments of righteousness, yielded to God for his services and for his glory. The devil has no place in me, no power over me, and no unsettled claims against me. All has been settled by the blood of Jesus. I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I love not my life unto the death. My body is for the Lord, and the Lord is for my body. Amen? Amen. 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 Grace and peace, CC. Grace and peace. Father God, I ask that you to continue to have your way in this service, God. I pray for the your manservant that's coming today, God. Touch him now, God. Let him speak through you, God, to bless the people. I pray that everyone leave empowered, God. They be restored. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We come to welcome you into the house. Hallelujah. 
We hope you feel welcome coming into the door, going out. Hallelujah. If you could just look over across the room and say hi to somebody that you didn't come with. Hello. Hey, friend. Hey, sister. Hey, brother. Hallelujah. We come to welcome you to the house. Yeah. Everybody, everybody clap those Oh my brother, oh my brother, and my sister, oh my sister. Say I'm glad, I'm glad to see you. Here. So glad, so glad to see you. Say God has kept you, God has to see another day. See another day. And I'm glad, I'm glad to see you. Here. So glad, so glad to see you. Here. Sing oh my brother, oh my brother, and my sister, oh my sister. Say I'm glad. God has blessed you God has to see another day. See another day. And I'm glad. I'm glad to see you. So glad. So glad say we hope. We hope you be restored. Say we hope. We hope you be inspired. You leave regret.
Is that how your heart's posture? Yeah. continuously we will always, always. Uh, it's on our hearts today Lord we will always always, always. we will always yeah, my, my, my. Sure, yeah. come in the room Jesus come in the room Jesus we invite your praise we invite your praise we invite your presence we invite your praise I will always worship. 
your worship stop. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's in the room, is he not? Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Uh, so, I made the mistake of telling Minister Carla that I had a word. She had a nerve to tell pastor, so now I'll be giving y'all the motivational speech. Glory. Uh, me being me, uh, y'all know I'm annoying. I gotta give something a topic. Uh, I decided to call this one, but wait, there's more. Hey! Yes, sir! Um, if you have your Bibles, which you should, please turn to Jeremiah 29:11. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, it's a good book. Argue with your mama. Uh, and the Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So you know how church folks love to say, that old saying, I don't look like what I've been through or you don't look like what you've been through. Uh -huh. But honestly, people of God, can we please be honest here and admit that we do act like what we've been through. Hey, talk about um, To start off, to introduce myself, my name is Jeremiah Godley. I'm a 19 year old college student. Um, I come from a deeply rooted Christian you know, family. Everywhere you turn, there's a deacon or a minister or a pastor, evangelist, somewhere in my family. Um, my mom, she's a prophet, and my dad, he's a minister in the Lord's church. Um, so you would think that for me, I would grow up to be, you know, Holy Ghost-filled, fire, fire, fire kind of kid. Um, <laughs> indeed, I was not. Um, right. Honestly, a year ago, and for the majority of my life, I did not believe in God. Right. Um, it was odd considering my family. Just imagine, like, you know, my mom prophesying at different churches. My siblings are her little adjutants. My dad praying over people. And I'm sitting in the back playing Angry Birds. Okay. You know, like, I just, I didn't really care for stuff like that. Okay. Um, to explain more about it, I want to first start off with talking about the story of Job. Um, everybody knows his story. Um, Job had everything. He had his family. He had his wealth. He had his land. He had his people. He didn't need or want anything. And most of all, he was a man of God. Um, but then in the blink of an eye, he lost it all just based off a test of his faith. I related to Job and many other stories like that because when I was told that I wasn't going to make it to the age of 19, every piece of my faith had like dropped. So for all those years, I obviously I didn't look like what I was going through, but I indeed acted like it. I guess you could say that I was angry with God uh -huh. and not really believing in him. I had a mindset of how could you let someone who trusted you die? Um, what made it worse was people, um, especially church people. You know how church people, they love to assume and tell yourself and about your future. Um, but what people misunderstand and the piece of knowledge that they fail to receive is that the only person who can tell me about me and where my life is going is God. Um, two years ago, I had met Pastor for the first time and he, sent, he said something to me that like really stuck. Um, and mind you, he didn't know me at the time. He said, no matter what people think about your life and whatever you don't expect your life to be, I'm going to pray that God shows you what he has in store. Uh -huh. 
Now, mind you, I was like freaking out because I had just met the guy. So I'm like, who's telling my business? Who you been talking to? Uh, so I had like wrote it down and I just like made sure I remembered it. But definitely his words had like stuck with me because now I'm in school for free, getting up to three degrees and, you know, and now I'm just like proving to the people and even proving to myself, you know, who didn't really see much in me that one day you're going to see the word doctor in front of my name. Uh, so people of God, I just want to encourage you and help you understand that no matter what people think, assume, or even believe of what they know about you and your future, I promise you that God knows and intended for there to be so much more. Thank you. Grace and peace. Come on, clap your hands again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is good ground. This is good ground. Amen. We just thank God. Hallelujah for our brother and our son. And amen. Jeremiah. Amen. You never know what a person's going through. Uh, I don't care how deep you are. If God don't show you. Amen. Turn around and smile. And say, neighbor, we are on good ground. We are on good ground. At this time, I'm here to receive receive your offering amen and again this is good ground to sow into amen amen we're going to ask you to get your tithe that's 10 percent and your offering amen god has been so good to us and as i look around and i see all these young people and amen graduating on this year and my God, I, my heart leaps. Amen. Because greater, amen, God has greater things for all of us. Amen. And I'm excited about it. Amen. He's been good. Hallelujah. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I know he's been good. I know he's been good. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus, uh, Lord, we thank you. Amen. When you have that offering in your hand, amen, we're going to ask you to stand. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Jireh. Oh, yes, he is. represents what? Power, strength, and authority. Hallelujah. As you lift that offering in the air, hallelujah, above our heads, say today I present my tithe and offerings and my love gifts. This is my first and this is my best. As we give today's offering, we believe jobs, Raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements and estates, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, lost money found, bills paid off, mortgages, car loans, student loans, somebody say paid off, debts demolished, royalties received,
see. You can text empowerment, text the word empowerment to 73256. Did I say it right? Amen. Or you can use the mail, 19 Mont Street, Hamden, Connecticut, 06514. Come on, let's get excited about giving. Why? Because the Lord has blessed us all week long. Hallelujah. You in the hands of our hospitality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. The story above the nation. And the story above the the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. And the glory above the nation. He's got the highest praise. Acknowledge him always. Let all our people say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nation. And His glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nation. And His glory above the nation. So give God the highest praise. Acknowledge Him always. Let all God's people say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Grace and peace again, empowerment. Grace and peace. Praise the Lord, everyone. We would like to take this time to welcome you once again to the Empowerment Christian Church, where we empower the people of God with the Word of God. Whether you're here in person or watching us online, we are happy to have you join us for worship today. It is our prayer that you leave restored, inspired, and most of all, empowered. Amen. If you're a first-time guest or a visitor today, please feel free to stop at our information desk in the fellowship hall to receive more information about ECC. We also have refreshments and welcome bags available for you there. Uh, please remember to fill out a welcome survey to stay in touch and a prayer request card if you like. would like us to join you, uh, join in with you in prayer. We would love to hear from you and to pray with you. At this time, if you have not done so already, please take the time to do your own social media check-in. Take a selfie or an ussy and let your friends know that you are here and that they still have time to get here. Also remember to, to share today's broadcast, reminding your social media family to join in, amen? Our regularly scheduled service announcements are as follows. Uh, Sunday afternoon worship begins at 12, p uh, 12 p.m. with prayer beginning at 11.30 a.m. The ECC daycare opens at 11.15 a.m. First time guest reception immediately after service. WNPR every Wednesday, and for those who don't know what WNPR means, it means Wednesday night prayer revival every Wednesday here at the Empowerment Christian Church at 7 p.m. Empowerment announcements for June 16, 2024. ECC Worship's first single, In the Room. Yes, yes. It is available to stream and download on all music platforms. The video for the single is also available on YouTube. If you have not already, please go listen. Make sure you share the song on all your social medias and tag official ECC worship in the post. We are excited to announce the launch of ECC TV, a new platform to promote uh, we, who we are as a church and what we are doing to engage, encourage, and empower our community, premiering on July 7th. We need volunteers to host our new channel, so please see MIT Robin if you would like to, say, to sign up. Apparently, Seven said he's signing up as well. <laughs> June is Men's Month. Yes. Oh, y'all better make some noise in here. Y'all better make some noise. Y'all better make some. Y'all better make some noise. <laughs> and our Men of Visions Men's Department have planned activities throughout the month, including guest speakers, outings, and more. More details to come. So please keep an eye out and plan to support. Amen. This Saturday. 
our Soul Food Saturday dinner sale will be. Amen. Please share the flyer with your friends and families, co-workers, uh, neighbors. Help us to reach our goal for the quarter. If you, if each of it, each member, excuse me, of ECC sells five dinners, we will exceed our goal. Tickets for our ECC album release concert, the ECC Live Experience, are now live. Join us for the album release on June 28th. Come out and help celebrate this major achievement. Purchase your tickets at the link posted on our realm and our social medias, or see MIT Robin or Elder Coleman. On Saturday, uh, Saturday, June 29th, Lady Sherry will be a guest speaker at the Reveal Conference hosted by Lady Shantae White and the Evening Star Holiness Church. Please save the date, if you didn't hear me, June 29th. Please save the date as we prepare to go out and support our First Lady as she ministers. Amen, yes. Looking ahead. Pilgrim Assemblies International Holy Convocation will take place on June 22nd through June, uh, excuse me, July 22nd through July 26th in Atlanta, Georgia. Save the dates and please make plans to attend. Realm will be regularly updated with ECC related uh, announcements and updates. Please check in regularly and make sure you have on your notifications turned on so you do not miss out. If you have any issues with the Realm or need to set up a Realm account, please see uh, MIT Robin. The ECC daycare, right there at that door with the please remove your shoes sign, needs donations. A list of the daycare's needs will be posted in Realm. Please see Sister Takara for more information on how you can help. Happy birthday and anniversary to everyone in June. Happy birthday. An anniversary to everyone in June. And most of, not most of all, but congratulations to all of you who are graduating or have graduated this year. Amen. Amen. Remember to pray for those you don't see. These are your announcements, ECC. Please remember, 2023 was big, but 2024 will be what? Amen. Grace and peace, ECC. All right, so as you know, it is Jen Now Sunday, um, and it is the end of the school year, so we are going to acknowledge everyone. So I'm going to ask that the, at this time, our graduates, please put on your cap and gowns. And also, as I call your name, please come down the middle aisle and stand in the front. So I'm going to give you guys a second. Um, we are very proud of you all. Um, School isn't what it used to be, honestly, if we're honest. It's, they face a lot, just with the world, the pressure, society in itself, so we want to honor them all today. Um, so I'm gonna start. Um, Seven has completed pre-K three, and he will be going to pre-K four. It's okay. Um, Arrow has completed pre-K three and will be going to kindergarten. Come on, Arrow. Yeah, Arrow. Yeah. Stay right here. No. Okay. Um, he's not here today, but Zayvon completed kindergarten and will be going to first grade. Um, Callie completed fifth grade and will be going to sixth grade. <laughs> Dylan has completed the seventh grade and will be going over to the eighth grade. Where is Dylan? Okay, she's in the daycare, she's working. Uh, Delano finished the seventh grade and will be going to the eighth grade. Amen. Angela, who is not here as well, has completed the eighth grade and will be a rising, and is a rising freshman, AKA also going to the ninth grade. Ryan. Salisbury has completed the eighth grade and will also be a rising freshman this coming uh, fall. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't she look nice in her cap and, and her gown and her cap in her hand? <laughs> we have Ajane, who is not here as well, completed the ninth grade and will be going to tenth. We. We have Kimani. He has completed the tenth grade and will be going to the eleventh grade. 
All right, and we have Aaron completed 11th grade and will be going to 12th grade. Come on down, take your walk. And along with Aaron, we have MIT Elijah completed the 11th grade and will be going to 12th grade. Let's give it up for our rising seniors. All right. Every, okay. Josiah completed 12th grade and will be going to Gateway in the fall. Eunisa completed 12th grade and will be going to Gateway in the fall as well. Uh, Jaden completed 12th grade and will be going to Porter and Chester. Come on, Jaden. Now our track star, Imani, completed 12th grade and will be going to South Carolina State University. And Jeremiah um, completed his freshman year of college. We are so proud of each and every one of you. Um, we also just want to announce some of your academic acknowledge achievements this year. Um, Dylan, received her certificate and pin for the National Junior Honor Society. <laughs> um, Aaron served as the Tin Man in the Wiz with two sold out shows. Yes! The only African American nominated for Best Actor for the Son Sondheim, thank you, awards this year. <laughs> Opened up for Hezekiah Walker and Todd Delaney served his third term as Arts and Organizers Officer at Co-op High School, yes. performed for a Director of Yale School of Arts, yes. nominated to be Peer Leadership for New Haven Public Schools, and last but not least, Engineer Sound Assister on his first album, ECC Worship yes. Album. MIT yes. yes. Elijah, has served his third term as spirit officer at Cooperative Arts High, High School. Starred in The Wiz as The Wiz with two sold out shows, working part time, opening up for Hezekiah Walker and Todd Delaney, performed for director of Yale School of Arts, nominated to be the peer leadership for New Haven Public School, and has also served as tenor on his first album with ECC Worship. Amen. Amen. Now, Imani, take a deep breath for this one. Amani is holding all holding three all state titles, long jump record for the Bethel Invitational, two times, not one but two times SSC Scholar Athlete, director of the first black historic fashion show at Career High School, graduated with honors, a part of the Business Honor Society, receiving an award for excellence in business management economic, civics, and statistics, and the Jonathan Heller Memorial Scholarship in the John Olipsky Jr. Scholarship. Amen, we are so grateful. And quiet as is kept, she received another athletic scholarship. One, another one, and another one. <laughs> And Jeremiah received the MIT Black Scholar Award for maintaining straight, oh sorry, MTI Black, Scholars, Black Scholar Award for maintaining straight A's and a 4.0 GPA while being a triple major, triple in musical theater, communications, and biochemistry. And due to the award, got offered a job over the summer directing Hairspray Jr. for ages 12 through 17 in Manhattan, New York. Can we please give it up for all of our young people? These young people are the epitome of, but wait, there's more. Amen? All right, now you're in the hands of uh, Adjutant Joe. Grace and peace, ECC. Let's put our hands together for our graduates one more time. Great job, everybody. Very proud of everybody. I want to wish 
a happy anniversary to our pastor, Pastor Corey Salisbury. Lady Sherry Salisbury, I know you're watching. Happy, happy anniversary. 17 years. That's a long time, right, Elder? I've only been married for about four years, so I got a long way to go. A long, long way to go. Right now, we're going to take the time to wish all the fathers in the house happy Father's Day. We want to present them with a token of our appreciation. It's men's month. Let's not forget that us men, we need your support, ladies. You got to be there for us. We need you more than ever before, especially in our days in society. We've been chastised and set aside and right just just kicked down in uh in the trash <laughs> i'm exaggerating of course i'm just kidding but without you by our size there's nothing we can't do right with you by our size there's nothing we cannot do so us ladies give yourself a hand but at the same time let's recognize our fathers today so you gonna bring that for me thank you the first person we want to recognize is our pastor, Pastor Corey. He's away, but we're going to save his gift for him. Let's give him a hand, please. The second person we want to recognize today is our elder, our own elder, Devon Coleman. BC, isn't he sharp today? We want to recognize our elder, Hicks. Come on up, sir. Come on up, happy Father's Day. Brother Aaron, our musician. The talented, the only, only. Happy Father's Day. Mr. Brian, happy Father's Day. Last but not least, I don't think I see him in the sanctuary today. Where's, is Brother Norman here today? No? All right, we're going to save that gift for him. Happy for Father's Day to you, Brother Norman, if you're watching us. This is our presentation for the men's uh, department. Just want to say happy Father's Day to everybody and have a, a great service. Thank you. Oh, before I go, let's introduce our speaker for today. Uh, just a quick word about Elder Coleman. Elder Coleman is he's, he's in everything. When I say everything, he's in everything. I've gotten to know this brother. He is kind-hearted. He is true. He's genuine. He is loving. And he's not afraid to let you know when you're wrong. How many of you know that, it, you know, we need people like that in our lives to be able to tell you, hey, you know what, I don't agree with this. Let's go a different route. Brother Coleman is as genuine as they come. So we want to welcome today. He's going to be our speaker for today. Please come on up, sir, and deliver the word of God. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise? Come on. After the acknowledgments and the accomplishments, he deserves all the glory and he deserves all the honor. Come on, I said give Jesus a hand clap of praise. I didn't say give me a hand clap of praise, but give Jesus one. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice and give God a praise. Hallelujah. I don't hear you. I said lift your hands and lift your voice and give God a praise. Hey, he's worthy. He woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Hey. Lord, we magnify your holy name. You're worthy. You're worthy. You kept us in our right minds. You kept us from incidents, accidents, drunk drivers, distracted drivers, the stray bullets, the muggers, 
the robbers, the thief, and the killers. Lord, we bless your name. Somebody ought to praise him right now. Somebody ought to thank him right now. Hey! Have your way in this house today, Lord. Move like you want to move. Move like only you can move. Provide a miracle for somebody here today, God. By the time they leave this service, and by the time they get to their door, God, let there be a miracle waiting for them. Hey! Let their prayers be answered. Hallelujah! Let that blessing come down. You're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that we can ask to think. Somebody ought to praise him for it. Because he's doing it for you right now. I said he's doing it for you right now. Why don't you go to a neighbor and say, he's doing it for you. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for you. Hey! Well, we came to church. We might as well have it. We could have stayed home and watched it on live if we didn't want to do nothing. If we didn't want to participate. But while we're here, while we got breath in our bodies, we got to participate. We got to raise our hands. We got to lift our voice. We got to move our feet because he's worthy. I said he's worthy. You want to be praising right about now. You want to be praising right about now. the simple fact that he woke you up this morning. Some people didn't wake up, Brother Joe. But I'm glad I'm one of the ones that did. Overseas, he could have called me home last night. But I thank God for one more chance. One more chance. One more chance to get it right. Oh, let's clap our hands for a little bit. Praise him, brother Kimar. Praise him. Why don't y'all help him praise him? Hey! We got to move on. We got to move on. You might can catch us at the end. But we got to move on. Amen. I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. For the opportunity to be here. Amen. I want to let us celebrate our pastor in his absence. Come on, you can do better than that. Our Pastor Corey Salisbury and our First Lady. They're not here, but they're watching us on live. Amen. And we thank God for our overseer. Come on, you can do better than that. I said, thank God for the overseer of the house. Yeah, that's right. That's right. She's deserving of it. Amen. 
she's deserving of it. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Amen. And my son. Amen. This is my uh, the second. I'm honored because this is my second Father's Day preaching here. Amen. Last year was a little surprise for me. I was wondering why all my family and friends was here. Amen. And pastor said, we're elevating you to an elder. Amen. So I'm glad he's away because I don't know what would have happened today. Amen. But I thank God uh, that elevation is in the house. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my grandmother. Amen. And Minister Pat and Minister Jeannie. May thank God for you coming out. Amen. Um, I would ask that you get your Bibles and stand and turn to Luke 18, 35. Amen. Luke 18, chapter 18. Starting at the 35th verse. And while you're getting that, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you humble as I can. I'm asking that you go before me today, God. I'm asking that you anoint my lips of clay, God. I'm asking that you speak through me. Oh, God, let your spirit speak through me, God. Let no flesh come out of my mouth, but only what the Holy Spirit would unction me to say, God. Oh, God, anoint my head, God. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, oh God. Oh God, I ask that you give the people receptive hearts, God. Receptive minds right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your word fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 18, starting at the 35th verse. Once you have that, amen, I want you to say amen. Amen. And it reads as thus. And it came to pass that as he was come into the night of Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 39 says, And they went before and rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praises unto God I want to talk to you a little bit first before I get into my topic so you may have your seats amen family we're living in a time where the representation of a father in a household it gets less and less each year uh, my wife and I were having a conversation one day and we were talking about our generation and how the fathers of these kids, they're missing. Some have passed away. Some aren't allowed to even be in their child's life. Uh, and some just don't want to be in the child's life. Um, if I can say this, I'm not a therapist, nor do I want to be one. Uh, but I say all kids should have the opportunity to have their fathers active in their lives. I'm going to say it again. All kids should have the opportunity to have their fathers active in their lives. Um, fathers, like mothers, um, are pillars in development of a child's emotional well-being. Um, and this is my official first Father's Day and becoming a father was a huge step for me but I'm glad that I took it 
When my wife uh, first told me that we were expecting, I had a moment to myself and I was trying to figure out what type of dad that I was going to be. Uh, do I want to be the hard dad or you know, the soft dad or the bestie dad, um, the cool dad? Um, I thought, well, what type of dad did I have? And realized that he wasn't in my life. So I couldn't model myself after him. I then thought about overseer one more person and uh, that was our heavenly father. A man who was loving, a man who was forgiving, a man that promised he would always be with us. Uh, he shows generosity and he's compassionate and he's selfless and patient. Someone who didn't give up on them because of spiritual backgrounds or someone who didn't give up on them because of sexual backgrounds, but a father who embraces all because they're who, because they're who they are. Um, all while leading them in the right direction. Um, if I can be honest today and say that uh, we're missing the love of our fathers. So many are just there because it's their responsibility and it's their duty, but nobody is taking the time out just to nurture and pour, and pour into uh, these kids and show them how to be. The Bible tells us that if we train up a child in the way that they should go, uh, when they get old, they will never depart from it. Nobody shows genuine love to these innocent kids anymore. Uh, when I was growing up, I had many older men who took the time to pour into me um, and prepare me for my future. Many teachers from the school, many uh, elders in the church, many neighborhood uncles, as we would say. And although nobody really shows genuine love no more these days, I'm glad that Jesus did and he still does. If I can pause right here and ask, can another thing, can we stop saying uh, Happy Father's Day to all of the moms? I knew it was going to get quiet on that one. I knew it was going to get quiet on that one. Uh, it's, come on. Because um, they, <laughs> they say Happy Father's Day to the single moms and Happy Father's Day, amen, to all the moms that are holding it down by themselves. But let me tell you something. Um, a mother could never do what a father does. I don't care how much you try to uh, put it. I don't care how much you try to uh, say it. Uh, there's something in the chromosomes of a man that a woman just doesn't have. Um, thank you for stepping up and thank you for uh, taking on a single mother's role, but um, you're not the dad, amen, and you can never be the dad. So happy Mother's Day to you. But we see here in Luke uh, overseer, we had a blind man. He was a blind man. He wasn't, uh, his name wasn't mentioned in Luke's account, but in Mark's account, he is identified as Bartimaeus. Uh, Matthew's account says it was two blind men, uh, but Luke focused more on the man who was more vocal about his healing. This man was blind and he was begging. He probably didn't have a seeing eye dog or a walking stick because back in those days, those things weren't invented, invented just yet. So he had to do everything by sitting at the gate of Jericho and that was begging for what he wanted. Um, so he was doing his normal begging and he heard he heard a crowd of people walking by. Beggars in that time would often be found at the city gate where people would pass in and out of. Um, and it's so ironic because uh, today things haven't changed um, in today's so uh, society. Because every time I get off the highway, we can find someone that's there begging for money, someone there begging for food, um, someone there that's just begging. And uh, nowadays I found out some people even have the nerve to beg for cigarettes and they've been begging for weed. But this is the reality that we have come to. And what I found interesting is that uh, studies have shown that people who are blind are more, more likely to have a higher sense of 
hearing because they solely depend on another sense to replace the one that's gone. That's why you uh, see sometimes people with walking sticks because they can provide a auditory feedback to help them navigate through their surroundings. Um, some sticks are known as smart sticks. They are, they are equipped with ultrasonic and infrared sensors to detect obstacles like walls, vehicles, and stairs, and even people. Um, when that object is detected, the stick provides alerts through beeps, audio signals, and vibrations. The one thing about this blind man is that he realized although he was blind, he was not deaf. So he hears the crowd go by and he asks, what's going on? What's happening? What's all the commotion about? And uh, now you know him being blind, you know he was going to be the one in Acts. Um, so he was blind and he was a beggar. And there's no way that he was just going to hear all this commotion and all this noise and just be calm until it stopped. So he asks them, what's going on? And they tell him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, you would think that Jesus would have heard him the first time and went to see what he wanted, but he didn't. And I just want you to know that even today, when you call on Jesus and you don't get an answer, that doesn't mean he hasn't heard you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Some, of peop some people are impatient because he does things on his own time. And just when you think he hasn't heard you, he'll come through for you just in the nick of time. So the people that was leading the way, they told him to shut up. They told him to be quiet. Hush all that noise. <laughs> Even those around him, they rebuked him. And they, they, they told him, to just be quiet. And uh, he refused to be silent. He refused to be silent. This persistent um, urgency highlights the blind man's unwavering faith and unwavering belief in Jesus' ability to heal him despite the doubts and the dismissals of others. The blind man's boldness in calling out Jesus amidst the crowd's uh, significance and um, it was his unwavering faith and determination and persistence in seeking Jesus' attention that caught the ears of Jesus' attention. But what I've learned is that you can't allow people to get away from what you need from the Father. I'm going to say that again. You can't allow people to get in the way of what you need from the Father. Sometimes it may be your own family. Sometimes it may be your loved ones. Sometimes it can even be your kids. But you have to be bold enough to not let anyone stop you from getting what you need. Somebody say amen. Amen. I watch my son sometimes when I get off work and he's home and he's created a mess in the room and toys are everywhere. But when I walk in the room overseer, he finds a way to push past all of the toys to get to his father because he realized that I have something that he needs. That's why if you have healing, all you got to do is just ask him for it. If you need a breakthrough, all you got to do is just tell him. If you need deliverance, well, he's able to do that. He's able to do whatever you need. He's able to give you whatever you need. He said in John that whatever you ask in my name, that will I do for you. And that's why we pray. And, and when we pray, we always end it in Jesus' name. Because Buddha can't do it. Daddy Grace can't do it. The Dalai Lama can't do it. Father Divine can't do it. But when I call on Jesus, he answers prayer tell somebody just call on them just call on them. just call on them 
just call on him. You can't be shy about this thing, but you have to cry out for what it's worth. I cried to the Lord overseer and he heard my cry. So he shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. And that part stuck with me when he said son of David. He didn't say Jesus of Nazareth, but he said son of David. I want to pause again here and tell you that this verse demonstrates the blind man's faith and belief in Jesus as the son of David. A title that reference uh, the messianic lineage of Jesus. And by, by addressing Jesus as the son of David, the blind man acknowledged Jesus' royal lineage and, and his role as the promiser to deliver Israel. This declaration reveals that the blind man understood and accepted uh, Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. The blind man's plea for mercy is also a powerful expression of humility and dependence on Jesus for healing. Despite his physical disability, uh, the blind man demonstrates spiritual sight by recognizing Jesus as the source of mercy and restoration. This wasn't a helpless, feeble cry. It was loud and it was instant. Now, he doesn't have sight, but he can still hear. Does not have sight, but he still has a voice. You have to learn how to use what you have. You have to learn that your handicap is not your hindrance. I'm going to say it again. Your handicap is not your hindrance. Some people say, I can't come to church because I got a headache, or I can't come to church because my feet is swollen, my back is killing me. But you got to be like the psalmist David and say that I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter how I feel, I'm going to get what I get in the praise. Look at somebody and say, get what you need to get. Get what you need to get. Amen. And I'm so glad for our sister Paula who was on the uh, live stream. You got to be like sister Paula who was in a tragic accident. Amen. But every time she comes into the house of God overseer, she can't, she's, she's bound to a wheelchair right now. But when she gets into the house of God, despite her handicap, she lifts her hands. And when the praise is going forth, she... She, she moves and rocks in the, in the wheelchair. Even though she can't move her feet, she knows how to use what she got because she knows that her handicap is not her hindrance. Somebody praise him right there. So when he shouted, son of David, have mercy on me, that got Jesus' attention and he stopped right in his tracks and he ordered that the man be brought to him. And as he was coming to Jesus, Jesus asked him and he said, what do you want me to do for you? He doesn't say give me money which he can use. He doesn't ask for a house which he can use, but he says, Lord, I want to see. Now I find it fascinating that Jesus uh, he would even ask the man what he wants because you would think it would be obvious uh, one of the reasons he asked this question is to energize his faith and cause it to be vocalized but the reality is that some people do not really want to be healed they want a blessing they want a prayer they want a temporary fix but the real they don't want the real healing because they are too comfortable in the state and in the condition that they are in they're comfortable with the benefits they're comfortable with how nice people treat them they're comfortable with how someone caters to their commands but people have they be have they become so dependent on the lack of things that they are not willing to give it up for the better of things just nudge your neighbor and say lord i want better lord i want better Lord, I want better for me and my family. Lord, I want better for me and my household. Lord, I want better for me and my kids. Lord, I want better. Jesus says unto the blind man, he, he says a command overseer. He says, receive thy sight. 
thy faith have made you whole. And I'm just about done here because I got to go eat on Father's Day before the restaurants get packed. But Jesus, he speaks a word. He spoke a commandment for healing. And the healing, it takes place immediately. Matthew's accounts of this miracle adds a couple of small points here. He mentions a second blind man that was healed at the same time. And the fact that Jesus was compassionate on them and he literally touched their eyes. Uh, but was it a touch or was it just a word of healing does it matter sometimes Jesus he only touches and other times he touches with a word other times he just speaks a word I came here today to tell you that you have to obey the voice of God that's my topic look at somebody and say obey the voice of God if the blind man was deaf, he wouldn't have been able to even hear Jesus going by and to be able to ask for the healing. But Jesus, being all-powerful and all-knowing, already knew what he wanted when he was called over there. So he spoke his command. He said, I sent my word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. But how does a blind man really Really know that it was Jesus well Jesus reminds us that my sheep know my voice huh? and the stranger they will not follow but will flee from him for they not know the voice of a stranger that's why I don't have time to sit around and listen to gossip all day because my ears are only open to the father you have to silence your voice sometimes so he can speak Speak. That's how you know he's speaking because when you ain't talking too much and you can just be in the atmosphere to allow God to speak, that's when you can hear him clearly. You have to silence your voice. Look at your neighbor and say, silence your voice. Learn how to shut up and just let Jesus talk. Come on, somebody say, learn how to shut up and let Jesus talk. He says in Deuteronomy 28 and 12, now it shall be if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, be, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord. Lord, your God. There's a blessing when I hear and obey his voice. But if you read down to verse 15, it tells us that, it tells us the opposite overseer, that the opposite will happen. It tells us that you will be cursed in the city and you will be cursed in the field. Your kids will be cursed. Everything that you do will be cursed because you did not obey his voice. So I got to obey his voice. I have to obey his voice. It's a must that I obey his voice. Forget about what others are saying. I have to take into initiative what God is saying to me. I have to be considerate of what God is saying to me. I can't worry about the naysayers and I can't worry about what the people on the outside are saying about me. I can't worry about what different people are saying about my situation, but I have to learn how to keep my ears position to God I have to learn how to keep my ears positioned to his voice he told the people overseer in Israel that the first thing that I require of you when I brought you out of Egypt was not sacrifice or offering or a lot of a, a legal requirement but I required of you was to hear and obey my voice look at somebody and say obey his voice Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. And although we have to obey his voice, we can't do it without faith. He told them your faith has made you whole. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You got to be like the blind man and have some unstoppable faith. Look at your neighbor and say, what kind of faith do you have? 
What kind of faith do you have? Faith that will take no for an answer. Faith that will say, I need everything from God, no matter how I got to get it. They tell him, overseer, to shut up, and he gets louder, Elder Lewis. He gets louder. You can't stop me when my faith is in position to hear from him. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to hear from him. If I run, I want to hear from him. If I jump, I want to hear from him. If I got to leap over walls and bounds, I want to hear from him. I'm going to take authority over my ears and I'm going to take authority over my mind because Satan, if he gets a hold of it, if he gets a hold of your mind, there's no room for Jesus to speak. And when he speaks, speaks whatever I need him to do it will be done in Jesus name somebody praise him right now because he's opening your ears somebody praise him right now because he's clearing your mind somebody praise him right now because he's doing it just for you somebody bless him somebody thank him Somebody bless him. Somebody thank him. He's opening up your ears. You might can't see him, but if you allow him to, he's going to speak to you. It could be in the morning time. It could be in the evening time. It could be in the late night hour, but he's going to speak. He's going to speak to you. I need you to go to three people and say, he's going to speak. He's going to speak. I said, go to three people and say, he's going to speak. Hey. God is going to do everything that he said he will do. He's going to do everything, Brother Joe, that he said he will do. And I believe it the faith to believe it. I got my ear to him to believe it because I'm obeying his voice. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm done. Hey. I'm obeying his voice. I'm obeying his voice. Forget about what you're talking about. I'll take it into consideration. But he has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No matter what comes my way. Jehovah. 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 Has the final say. Hey! Hey! The part that I like the most about this overseer is that it says in uh, the 43rd verse, the last verse. They said immediately when he received his sight, they followed him. They followed Jesus glorifying him. And the people that was there when they, when they saw this miraculous miracle, Elder Pat, they started praising God. You got to praise God because you got to know that he's getting ready to do it for you. It got to be in your knowing. I don't care what the obstacles look like but you gotta praise him because he's gonna do it no matter what he's gonna do it regardless of what you see he's gonna do it regardless of what you hear and when you see your neighbor praising him you gotta praise God with him hey hallelujah Hallelujah! He's getting ready to do it. Listen, 
We gonna stay in the praise, praise mode because I feel some things shifting in the atmosphere. I feel some ears unclogging in the spirit. Hey! I feel some eyes that's getting ready to be open. Because if we, if we live from this moment on, we can't do it in the flesh. But Aunt Tammy, we gotta do it in the spirit. We gotta have our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears. So I want to, if I can, if you allow me to, just I wanna anoint some ears because he's getting ready to open some ears for you. And after I anoint your ears, I want you to do like they did in the Bible. And I want you to praise him because there's some things that's getting ready to be revealed to you. There's some things that you're getting ready to hear that you never heard before. That's gonna make you say, wait a minute. I heard this before, but not like this. I saw this before, but not like this. He's getting ready to do it. Hell yeah, the ball. See ya? I need those that really believe what I'm saying to just come to the altar. Even if you can't come to the altar, I'll come to you. Because we all need our ears to be open. We all need our eyes to be open. Hey! Hallelujah. And after I touch you, I want you to leave from this place praising God and believing that it's already done.
be praising. You want to be thanking God because he's performing a miracle in your life.
hands in our chest. Hey! He's doing it for you right now. I said he's doing it for you right now. Hey! Somebody help him praise him. If you ain't gonna praise him, clap your hands at least.
with that spirit and said to the church, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 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 God because he's working things out for me. Look at the neighbor, say neighbor, he's working things out for me. I'm leaving here knowing that all things are worked out. Hey, I said I'm leaving here knowing that all things are worked out. No more hung down head. Because hey, Devil thought he was gonna have his way in your life. Hey! He thought he was gonna run havoc in your life. But this is not the end of your story. 
said this is not the end of your story. Look at the neighbor and say to be continued. There's more after this. There's more after this. There's more after this. There's glory after this. There's healing after this. There's deliverance after this. There's breakthrough after this. There's more after this. Hey! Come on, y'all. For a few more seconds, at least clap your hands. We gotta go on. But God is doing something in the lives of his people. I said he's doing something in the lives of his people. You ought to raise your hand and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, don't let your worship die down now. I said give God a praise. Give him a worship. Give him a Shabbat. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. He's a God of all knowing. He knows when you need it, how you need it, and he's going to give it to you. How many believe that this afternoon? I said, how many really believe that this afternoon? No matter what you're going through, he's able to pull you out and pull you through. There's no stuck in the middle with him. Hey! You can't be stuck in the middle with him. But he's gonna pull you all the way through. I got to come all the way through. I can't be in the middle of this. But I got to come through. And I'm gonna come through with power, strength, and authority. All right, somebody clap your hands and give God a praise. Listen, I want to do this, amen, since pastor's not here, amen, he didn't ask me to do anything but just preach the word of God. But I feel a, a strong release for somebody, and I want, to, I want to raise a seed, amen, and I need those of you that can and will to stand with me, amen, with at least $50. Amen. This seed might be the release that you need for your money to flow better. This seed might be the seed that you need to release for your family to come back together. All things are possible through a seed. That's how trees are grown and that's how things are plucked up from the earth. It's because we plant seeds in the ground. He said, if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. So today we're sowing into good ground. And how many know that, amen, this is good ground. Come on, y'all not saying nothing. I said, this is good ground. Amen. Our pastor does not take anything from the church. He doesn't wear the money that we give him. Amen. If anything, he puts more into the church than we give him. Amen. This is good ground. You can look around the church and see the progress that we have made. Amen. And see uh, that we still have a ways to go. Amen. But with your help, amen, all things are possible. So I'm standing, amen, with mine.
Amen. And, and I'm asking all of those that can and will, amen, to just stand. Amen. Even if you don't have 50, I'm asking that you stand with, amen, 25 and you partner with somebody. You partner with them. Amen. And say, you got 25, I got 25. Amen. Also, those of you online that are watching, amen. Thank you, First Lady Sherry. Amen. She's sewing. Could we clap our hands for that? Come on, you can do better than that for our First Lady. Amen. She's sewing. Thank you, Overseer. Amen. Thank you, my sister right there that stood. Amen. Amen. If you cannot give the 50, I'm asking if you got 25. Amen. Stand. Amen. Even if you don't have that, stand with whatever you got. Amen. Let's sow into the good ground. That's right. I said, let's sow into good ground. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad that I have seed to sow. He said he gives seed to the sower. Amen. You, regardless of whatever it is, if it's 10, amen, you better sow like it is the 50. Amen. If it's five, you better sow like it is the 50. It is about the attitude in which you sow. Y'all not saying nothing to me. The same attitude that you sow is the same attitude he's going to give back to you. Amen. And we don't want that. Amen. So we're sowing. We're standing all over the building with what we have. Amen. Whether it's a dollar. Amen. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. So don't ever think you're giving too less because he can replace it with a 10 times more than what you gave. Amen. There's been countless of times where I've, I've sown a seed and it was one of the last seeds that I had. You can start bringing your gift. It was one of the last seeds that I have overseer. And then before it, I knew it, a few days went by and it was double the amount in my account or somebody gave me that double the amount. Amen. So you, it's about your posture of giving. Amen. Your posture of giving. Amen. Amen. Father, I ask that you touch the seeds and the sowers. I ask that you return it a hundredfold return. Oh, Father, I ask that you give them a miracle. Haya. Thank you, Lord. A miracle in their money right now, God. Oh, God, some people are on their last. Some people don't even know where to go to anymore. But we thank you that you are replenishing what was given unto you, God. We ask all these blessings in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 We're asking, amen, all of those uh, to please get your tickets for our, our debut concert uh, for the single release, the album release. Sorry. Amen. Clap your hands for that. Amen. If you, even if you're a member of ECC, we want you to get a ticket. Amen. This is not a free event. Amen. This is a ticketed event. Amen. That is on the 28th. Amen. So we want to make sure we purchase the tickets because we don't want to be trying to get a ticket and then everybody from the outside got some. And now we upset. Amen. So we want to make sure that, you know, you get your tickets for June 28th, our album release concert, which is starting at 7.30 p.m. So we want you all, amen, to be um, aware of that. Also, we want to tell you that we want you to look out for our Facebook post a little bit later. We will be posting the full announcement of the concert with special guests, and you'll see who's going to be here, and you'll see everything a little bit later on. So make sure you tune in to our Facebook page. Amen for that. Amen. I'm going to ask, amen, Saints Godfather to come and dismiss us, Pastor Michael Williams. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Come on, clap it for Pastor Williams. Amen. This is something he would do. Amen. So thank God for you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Can we celebrate our executive pastor? Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. 
Amen. Amen. Give it up for your pastor. Amen. Happy Father's Day to our bishop. Amen. Everyone standing. We're going home. Everyone standing. We pray that you have a phenomenal Father's Day and that you enjoy this Sunday. Amen. Lift your right hand to the Lord. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, let it rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, consider yourself dismissed. God bless you.